Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and today we're going to look at an application of the gradient and directional derivatives that we learned about in the previous lecture. So recall from last lecture that if we want to know about the derivative in a particular direction, we can use this formula here. We could compute the dot product of the gradient with a unit vector in whatever direction we're interested in, okay? And that'll tell us how steep the function is in that direction. Well, what if we want to know what is the steepest direction, okay? In other words, we want to sort of walk up as much up as we can. We want to walk up as quickly as we can. How do we find what direction does that? Okay, that direction is called the direction of steepest ascent, and that's what we're going to look at today. How do you walk up as quickly as possible at a particular point? So to answer this question, we're just going to use properties of the dot product that we learned about a couple lectures ago. Okay, so remember the dot product, it can tell us about the angle between two vectors. Okay, so if theta is the angle between the gradient and the direction vector u that we're interested in, then what happens is this dot product here, well, it just equals the length of the gradient times the length of the unit vector u times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. Okay, and this is really useful because, well, for one thing, this length of the unit vector, well, it's a unit vector, and what that means is it has length 1, so that goes away. So I can make that little simplification there. Okay, and then another thing that's really useful is this length of the gradient, I have no control over that. The only thing I have control over is where u is pointing. So I have control over theta, but I don't have control over the length of the gradient. Okay, so if I want to make this whole quantity as large as possible, well, the way to do that is to make cosine of theta as large as possible. And the way to do that is to make cosine of theta equal to 1, right? Cosine of theta can never be bigger than 1, okay? It maxes out at 1. Okay, so this is maximal when cosine of theta equals 1. Well, when does that happen? Well, that happens exactly when theta equals 0, okay? When the angle between the gradient and u is 0. In other words when u points in the direction of the gradient. Okay, so what does this tell us? If we sort of go back to our original prob problem and think about this, it tells us that the direction of steepest ascent, the way to increase your function as quickly as possible, is to walk in the direction of the gradient. The gradient points in the direction that has the largest derivative. The gradient, in other words, points in the direction of steepest ascent. Okay, so let's go through an example to make sure that we understand what's going on here. Okay, so let's find the direction of steepest ascent for this function here, 3xy divided by e to the power x squared plus y squared plus x at a particular point at the point 0 minus 1. Okay, so on the graph over here, that's this point down here, 0 minus 1. Okay, and I'm going to rotate that graph around a little bit just so that we can get our bearings and get a bit of an idea of what that function looks like. So again, it's just going to have hills and valleys all over the place. So in the leftmost quadrant, it's got a big hill, and then in the back quadrant there, it's got a big valley. And so what we're going to do to find this direction of steepest ascent, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to find the gradient, okay? So I've gone through that calculation here. If you forget how to find gradients, go back to the previous lecture. Remember, all you do is you find the two partial derivatives, partial derivative in the x direction and partial derivative in the y direction, and that's what these two entries are. Okay, and they each have a common factor out in front. Okay, so I just pulled out the common factor outside of the vector. All right, so that's our gradients for a general x and y. I don't care about the gradient for a general x and y. I only need to know what does the gradient look like at 0 minus 1. So now I'm just going to plug in x equals 0 and plug in y equals minus 1. And when I do that, the gradient simplifies down to just this. Okay, now it's 3 over e times the vector minus 1, 0. Okay, and because I only care about the direction of the gradient, I don't care about how long it is, I only care about the direction, this 3 over e doesn't actually matter, right? That's just some positive number. It just stretches. It determines how long the gradient is. So it's equivalent to say, ah, the gradient, it's pointing in the direction of minus 1, 0. So that's the direction of steepest ascent. Okay, so I'm just going to draw that on the picture now. Okay, so the direction of steepest ascent is minus 1, 0. In other words, minus 1 in the x direction and zero in the y direction. Okay, so if you wanna go up that hill as quickly as possible, that's the direction you should walk. Okay, and a really nice feature of steepest ascent of using the gradient like this is maximization of a function. Okay, if you've got a multivariable function and you wanna find out where it's as large as possible, you wanna find the top of a hill, then what you can do is you find the gradient and that points in the direction of steepest ascent and then you just walk in that direction for a little bit. And then you find the gradient there and you walk in that direction for a little bit. 
And then you find the gradient there and you walk in that direction for a little bit. And every time you do this, you're walking up as quickly as possible. Okay, so it seems intuitive, hopefully, that, you know, even, you know, like you're walking up the hill as quickly as possible. This is a reasonably good way to find the tops of hills. And this is a very commonly used method in practice. Okay, this method of steepest descent. Okay, it doesn't necessarily find you the actual top of the highest hill, like it's only a local search method. It finds you the sort of the, the top of sort of a nearby hill, but it's still a very useful method. Okay, and one really nice feature of this method actually is that it doesn't even require that you have an analytic formula for the function that you're dealing with, okay? Even if you're only sort of able to plug numbers into your formula and get answers out, it still works. You can still use this method to sort of optimize and find local maxes this way. Okay, so for example, imagine that we're lost out in the wilderness. You know, we just wake up some morning and for some reason we're out in the freezing cold in the wilderness and we don't recognize anything around us and we're really, really cold. We want to get out of the cold. We want to find somewhere warm to warm up. Okay, well, just by sort of walking around in a tiny little square around ourselves, we can find out what is the temperature nearby ourselves. Okay, and we want to sort of walk away from the cold area as quickly as possible. Well, based on this method, what we can do is we can just take temperature measurements in nearby x directions and nearby y directions. And those will give us estimates of the partial derivatives, which then gives us an estimate of the gradient, which is the direction of steepest ascent. It's the direction of quickest increase of temperature. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk a little bit in the x direction and a little bit in the y direction. So that's what I've done here. I've, I've walked a little bit in the x direction and taken temperature measurements uh, depicted by the different shades of blue here. And I've walked in the y direction and also taken different um, temperature measurements in that direction. And based on that, I can get estimates of the x and y partial derivatives. Okay, and then I just put those two partial derivatives into a vector. And that gives me the gradient, the direction of steepest ascent. And in this case, maybe it tells me to walk over this way. Okay. Um, I mean, sort of these lighter shades of blue tell me it's a little bit warmer. It's not quite as cold over in that direction. Similarly up there, hey, maybe it's not quite as cold over there. So the gradient's sort of pointing somewhere in between them. So then I walk in that direction for a little bit, and then I stop. And now I'm just going to repeat that procedure. I know what the temperature is where I am and just a little bit around me. Well, I'm going to walk a little bit in the x direction, a little bit in the y direction, and construct an approximation of the gradient out of that. Okay, and then I walk in that direction of the new gradient. And again, my temperature is going to go up a little bit. That's sort of the best direction that I can go in if I want to increase my temperature, if I want to find a warmer place. And now I just repeat and repeat and repeat. I do this over and over and over again, and eventually I'm going to get to a warmer place. And it does not require that I know what the temperature everywhere looks like. Okay, I only ever need to know what the temperature around me looked like to do that, sort of walking in the direction of steepest increase in temperature. All right, so that will do it for today's lecture. Thanks for watching.